by their team. Now the kick, uh, the ball is going to be placed at the 25, or the 15 rather. This is a 25 yard extra point drive from Bishop. High snap, McHenry gets it down. Wow. Line drive kick. And he got it. And we're tied at 21 all. The backup in Jordan Bishop evens the game at 21. 65 seconds left in the third. A tie ball game. We're back after this commercial break. JFK Stadium. It's a 21 all tie now after the 55 yard TD run by Tommy Meyer. And the Bishop extra point, which was harrowing in that he had three penalties before he ever got to kick it. But he knocked it in from five yards further back than usual. And he got it converted. We're tied at 21. Now Bishop kicks off, and it's a short kick. It's going to be fielded at the 20 yard line of the Vikings. But turned up field to the 25, now to the 30. And they're stopped to the 33-yard line. Less than a minute to go now in the third. Both teams with a TD in the quarter. Vikings come back out. Well, Evangel stroking on a big play in the long run by Tommy Meyer, and they needed that for some life and to, and to also let Missouri Valley know they're not done yet today. And it all started with Mitch making a big, big time catch, and uh, that just opens up the field for your running backs to do some damage. And Tommy Meyer took advantage of it, to be able to break a tackle and, and make a big time play for, for the Evangel football team. Vikings at their own 34 yard line. And off on a delay, and the Crusaders snuff it out and stop Stewart for maybe a loss of a couple of yards as they had him bottled up and take him down at the 30. It's going to be a loss of four. He took about a step to his left. Hit his own blocker and kind of fell down. Second down and 14. Second and 14. Reyes again out of the pistol formation. It looked like they're going to snap and then he Holtz now has the snap, hands it off again up the middle, and another nice tackle made, this time by Swillum for no gain, as they stop him at the 30, and it's going to be second down, maybe called it a third down actually, maybe give him a yard, but that's going to run out the third quarter, Evangel ends the period with momentum, and we go to the fourth quarter in a game with a conference title on the line, Evangel 21. Missouri Valley, 21, final 15 minutes coming up. May I have your attention, please, with the owner of the uh, spare tire, <laughs> slightly hairy, uh, with a little brown mold to the left of the belly button. It's an any. Please report to the press box and retrieve your appendage. Oh, they must have lost this parking further away from the stadium and walking in. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're back to the action. if you were 
told before the game you'd be tied at 14, you'd take it. You definitely would take a tie game going to the fourth quarter with these guys. Absolutely, and especially with how things went in the third quarter, you never know what might happen. Ray has a play action fake, throws on the run, a wobbly pass. It's intercepted, taken away by Evangel at the 50 yard line. Cam Bruffett wrestled down there. And what did we talk about earlier? The bounce will eventually go our way, and there and there it is. It's Cam Bruffett. Gathers it in for the interception, went off of the Viking receiver, and just an easy ball to pick off. Third turnover of the day for the Vikings. Bruce Reyes, who only had two interceptions against him all year, throws a pick there. And Evangel is a first and ten at the Missouri Valley 49. Brim Hall under center sends a man in motion behind him. And off Otis Brown at the middle and it's progress for about the 47 of gain of two before he's wrestled down. And a hole there, but the Vikings so good at able to adjust, slide over, and cut it off. The gain of two, it's second and eight. Just a strong, very strong defensive line. And, uh, I mean, they know how to defend against the run game, that's for sure. Second and eight for Evangel. They move the ball close to the 46-yard line of the Vikings. McHenry in motion far side. Grimaud out of the shotgun is back to throw. Fires over the middle, and it's intercepted by the Vikings on a ball offline. Return to the 40 and taken out of bounds near side by Missouri Valley's Tyler Davis. The pass just behind the receiver, Wes. He just threw it to the wrong spot. Davis was there waiting for it and took it away. Well, you know, they're, they're you know, you, you lose a little bit of momentum, obviously, when that happens. But um, <laughs> nothing really hurt. You have the ball, and, and now you don't. They had the ball, and then now they have it back. So, um, you know, not, nothing hurt, but uh, definitely an opportunity missed. Like crazy sequence. He traded turnovers just a couple of plays apart. Now the Vikings have it at their own speed seven. And off far side. Evangel has this strung out and a tackle made at the 40-yard line. Lamar, As they stop Keith O'Neill for the loss. And Lamar Allen just read that perfectly. And uh, like you said, just strung it out and was able to, to beat him to the outside and make the tackle. The loss of five, sending them back to their own 42. It's going to be second and 15. Three, uh, 13, 35 to go. We're in the fourth quarter at JFK Stadium. A 21-all deadlock between Evangel and Missouri Valley. Reyes out of the shotgun. Pair of running backs to his right in an eye formation. Takes the handoff. Looks, fires a pass to the far sideline. Going to be caught in the first down marker. And momentum stop there and he's going to be shy of a first down by a yard as he got the pass completion to the far side to Mikhail Johnson and still Cam able to keep him from that first down marker that's a big play because a yard right now can seem like five third down and a yard for Missouri Valley same formation. Actually, they may have another tight end in there. Reyes again out of the pistol. Angel's got it stacked up front. A little handoff's going to go for the first down, as I believe this is O'Neill getting across the 40 and into about the 38-yard line before he's finally brought down. Actually, that wasn't O'Neill. That was Lenoris Dukes. He looks like kind of their short yardage or me guy on a carry. He has 11 touchdowns without a ton of yards, but a big bruising back. He hit the hole hard and got to the 38. Gain of about four yards when he needed one. First and 10, Missouri Valley at the Evangel 38. Misdirection play. Reyes rolls out near side to throw. Lobs a pass over the middle. Caught at the 18 to the 10 to the 5, and they score. Missouri Valley back in front, hitting Chris Owens over the middle. 
they had everything flowing to the right. Then the quarterback Reyes came cutting back near side, rolling to the left, and found Owens on that little misdirection and able to hit him for the TD. Owens' second touchdown reception today. That's just a nice play to catch our over pursuit and are able to beat our defensive act to the near side. Now the extra point by Miramontes is good. He stays perfect on the year, and the Vikings retake the lead with 12.03 left in the fourth. The Vikings 28, Evangel 21. And out on the field, we're back to JFK Stadium after this commercial timeout. This is Sarah Watkins. A lot of people almost helped her. One almost cooked for her. Another almost drove her to the doctor. Still another almost stopped by to say hello. They almost helped. They almost gave of themselves. But almost giving is the same as not giving at all. This game has been a classic one with a lot at stake. Ball returned from the Evangel 1. Otis Brown at the 20 gets tripped up and goes down around the 24-yard line. These two teams have staged some memorable games. Vikings lead the all-time series 16-12. to They've won the last four. There's an injured Viking now on the plate. They'll look to attend to him. The oddity in the all-time series, the visiting team has won 19 times. A little more than a half the time, the team that's been on the road has won game, and there have been some times when that has been highly improbable, but has actually happened. And there's been some high-scoring games, some shootouts, some crazy comebacks between the two teams head-to-head. -head. And a lot of times it has... Uh, games have been played head-to-head -head when a lot has been riding on them, which is the case today. Both teams really playing hard, playing a very physical game. Really as physical as this Evangel defense has been all year. I knew you had to step up and play that way today, and, and uh, sure enough, they have. We mentioned a lot of Evangel sports in action today. Tonight at the Ashcroft Center, round one of the Heart of America Conference Volleyball Tournament. Evangel, the number three seed, they're at home tonight against Missouri Valley, the sixth seed. That match starts at 7 o'clock tonight at the Ashcroft Center. The Evangel men's basketball team is on the road and actually just underway at Missouri Baptist in St. Louis. The Evangel women's team started their season today in Oklahoma City at 12 noon against the defending national champions in NAIA Division I. The Evangel fell in that game. We'll pass along stories on that in the conference in a little while. Our coverage of Evangel men's basketball picks up on Monday night, our next Crusaders broadcast, Monday from the Ashcroft Center, when Evangel takes on College of the Ozarks. 6.45 broadcast start for us. 7 o'clock tip-off at Ashcroft. It's with College of the Ozarks and the Crusaders. Expecting another packed house. Those two teams get together for the first of two meetings and renew that local rivalry. And three basketball games next week before you with before we're back with you in football again. A week from today in Olathe, Kansas, as Evangel faces Mid-American Nazarene next week. First and 10 Crusaders, ball at their own 23-yard line. 
And off Tommy Meyer in a sweep near side. Gets to the 26 and wrestled down there. Tommy Meyer at around 145 rushing yards this afternoon and 14 carries. You've done it again. You shake your head as just once again the senior from West Plains produces. He's just a tough kid and an instrumental senior leader on this team. And he's, tell you what, he's been through it all. He's seen, he's seen it all. And uh, it's, it's really great to see him have a great day. Draw play for Otis Brown trying to get the outside can't. Tripped up on a great open field play. Another nice tackle by a guy that's had a couple of interceptions today and Tyler Davis, junior out of St. Louis. He had Brown bottled up, and Brown is a guy that is very good depth at making a miss. Couldn't get away there. No gain at third and seven. Evangel at their own 27-yard line. Grim Hall out of the shotgun. Two wide receivers to either side of the line of scrimmage. He has the snap. Back to throw. Looks. Fires a pass near side. Overthrows Booker incomplete. It looks like Jesse Vaughn was about to create space on that near right side. But uh, once again, Grim Hall, the pocket's collapsing. He had to get rid of it. And uh, still a lot of time left, but definitely not a possession that you want to give away quite so easily. Angel's going to find a way to dig deep now because they went three and out after the Vikings touchdown. Defense will need to come up big as a punt from Evangel is short. It's going to bounce at the 45-yard line of the Vikings, taking Evangel roll inside the 40 to the 39. And that is where Missouri Valley will have it, leading 28-21 with 10.36 to go. A lot of time left means two things, Wes. So when you're facing a team like the Vikings, it means that you still have some time to come back, maybe get a lead before the end of regulation. It also means that there's time enough to have the game get away from you if you have a breakdown or two, and you got to prevent that here. Yeah, absolutely. You have to have a sense of urgency. You need to play the game to win the game right now, and you're down a touchdown, and, and uh, right now a touchdown feels a lot, <laughs> a lot more than and just seven points. This direction play and a sweep near side. Fumble. And the ball fumbled. It comes out for the Vikings. They're going to get it back. It came out near side and the end around to Mikhail Johnson. He has what appears to be a first down as he got across the 50 but then coughed it up. But then is able to get it back and is going to wind up with about an 11 or 12 yard gain. And get into Evangel territory at the Crusaders 49. I'll tell you what, certain things have just not gone our way today. Um, and, and that's going to happen, but boy, I tell you what, a fumble would have been huge right there. First and 10 Vikings lost two fumbles on the day and committed three turnovers, uncharacteristic for them. Hand off near side, and a hole opens up for Dukes, who gets wrestled down at the Evangel 40, a nine-yard gain by the senior from Little Rock. Second and short. For the Vikings with 9.55 and counting here in regulation. Second down in the yard. Vikings shuffling all over the place and officials come in. They may have gotten a timeout called. Yes, they had some confusion going on. So the Vikings called timeout. We'll take one as well with 9.37 to go. It's the Vikings 28, Evangel 21, and with a timeout on the field, we're back after this. Stronger, healthier babies. It's what the March of Dimes is all about. Learn more about healthy babies at marchofdimesbaby.org.
We're back where Missouri Valley is a second and short. Second in the yard to go from the Evangel 40. Vikings ranked third in America, lead 28-21 with 9.37 to go in our fourth quarter. Long count, double tight end set. They're going to hand it off to the middle, get a first down and more as the running back is Dukes again, and he's wrestled down, hauled down from behind to the 30, a gain of 10. Well, they've definitely been running the ball better on this drive than they have the entire game. I mean, have yet to stop the run. They've got a tandem of back, one thing. I mean, you, you kind of keep going to find, I get producing, and Dukes has here late for them. And a guy that kind of finishes drives, 11 touchdowns coming in. He gets the call again up the middle, spins at the line of scrimmage, this time taken down as he got progress to about the 29. They gain a yard or two, and that's all. That was a nice hit by Denzel Billy to meet him at the line of scrimmage. He put a hard hit on him. And it'll be second down and nine. 8.50 to go in regulation. Missouri Valley unbeaten, ranked third in the NAIA. A win can give them the automatic berth out of the Heart of America Conference to the NAIA National Championship Series. Play action bake. Reyes rolled and right throws, and it's going to be bobbled and dropped to the 15-yard line. Incomplete. Well, Steven Swillen was over on that far side and was just able to put a hand up and cause an incomplete pass, and that's a big play because if he catches that, he runs into the end zone. Evangel had a two-score lead in the first half. First time the, Vi uh, first time the Vikings had been behind by that margin this year. Evangel had a 14-0 lead early in the second quarter before the Vikings came back to tie it at 14 at the half. Third down and nine. Reyes from the Evangel 30-yard line. Back to throw. Fires deep far corner, and it's going to be incomplete. Both players battling for position down there with a pass under thrown. It's going to be fourth down and nine. And what do you do here if you're the Vikings? You've got near Montes, a good field goal kicker, and he's in his range. And it looks like there's special teams units coming out. Well, you got to you got to go for the field goal right now. You lengthen your lead to ten. Uh, that's a, still a two-possession ball game, and with eight minutes left. Um, that really puts the pressure on the Angel offense. He is 9 of 14 this year. His long, though, is 46. This is from 47. They're not going to get it off. Play clock is out. Play clock wound all the way down, and I don't know if they got a timeout to beat the clock or not on the far side. That was not on purpose either because he had less than five. He had a lot, had a nine yards to go for the first down. So they weren't trying to draw Evangel off and not really kick it. They now will have to go for the punt. So that takes the potential of getting three more points on the board and getting a ten-point lead. Now they're going to punt it to the Crusaders. So you got to be wary here. Yeah. And yeah, he got 14 yards to get for the first down, but. You're in an area of the field where if you gamble here, it's it's not going to kill you if you don't get it. Jason Maiden will try to pin the Crusaders deep. The ball at the plus 35 for a punt. I wobble a punt. Middle of the field, caught by the Crusaders at the 12. That's where Evangel will have it, still trailing by 7 with 8.20 remaining in regulation. And then they proved to be a pretty big mistake by Missouri Valley. They had a good chance to put three more on the board. How's that for crazy? Just a, a delay a game, five-yard penalty. That, <laughs> I mean, if Evangel comes back to win this, I mean, that, that's something you'd look at as a potential turning point. It's the, uh, the oddest of penalties and smallest of things. They actually didn't even come close to getting them snapped. Wasn't even close to coming yet when that thing hit zero. First and ten of Angel. They've spotted it at the 14. Play action fake for Brimhall. Rolls away from pressure. Throws a screen. It's complete to a lineman. 
And it's tackled immediately at the 10, but there's a flag in the play as he threw a pass that was caught by Jordan Pierce, the freshman lineman from Missouri City, Texas. Had it and had no idea what to do with it. Now the officials are talking about the penalty, which is at the one-yard line where Brimhall was being wrapped up. And it, and it looked like Brimhall had a guy, but it just either went behind him or... <laughs> And Pierce turned around, caught it, and said, well, what do I do with this? Sort out the penalty down to her left. This crew has not had an easy day today. And we'll look at the replay. Where Bremhall's looking. I think he was, well, I think he thought Meyer may have cut back to the middle of the field. He yeah. was trying to block. So a lot of throwing it into the middle of his line. Ah. Paul Cott, guy in your knowledge ball. You have to get the day and lock it down. So that'll put Evangel inside their 10 and second down. Second down at about 17 for the Crusaders. 8.09 to go in this fourth quarter. Certainly better than safety. Well, absolutely. The other thing, though, is you've got to now find a way to move the chains out of this because you don't want to get pinned terribly deep. It's not half the distance to the goal. It's with the ball for one. That is not what they told us on the PA. Now the officials are going to talk it over again. I thought. Now they just didn't tell us right because that's on the one-yard line. It's a spot foul, not a half the distance to the goal infraction. It is, though, a loss of downs. And it's going to be a second down and about 22 to go for Evangel. The official's still now in a conference. <laughs> They've had a lot of conferences today. As we said, it's not been the easiest of days for them. Now they'll go back to work, so Evangel backed up to their own one-yard line. This is a much tougher break than half the distance of the goal. It's been at the two, you know. They're at the one. They're back to all the way up as far as they can, literally in the shadow of their own goal post. Hand off to Mike, trying to get out of his own end zone, and barely does, getting back to the one for no gain. It's third down and 22 to go from the one-yard line. The Vikings are so good up front that any play down there is scary if you're an offense. Because they're, they're going to get penetration if they come after you, and it's, it doesn't really matter what you run. It is tough to move forward, and the Bengals got no operating room here at all. Third down now from their own one. Play action fake for Meyer. Here's a ball thrown deep near side for Vaughn. It makes the catch of the 40 and is wrestled down to the 50-yard line. A spectacular grab by Jesse Vaughn and a ball perfectly placed by Brimhall. Oh, boy, that is a huge, huge play by Brimhall and Jesse Vaughn. And, and you had suspected to be... They would try something like that to isolate Vaughn on that side, but he was in double coverage and just made a spectacular over-the-shoulder catch. Wow. Highlight play stuff. First down for Evangel at the 50, and Tommy Meyer will get a three-yard carry right up the middle. Seven minutes to go and counting. It's 28-21. Vikings lead Evangel by seven. Second and seven for the Crusaders. Shotgun for Brimhall. Has the snap. Hand off Meyer looking for room to his left. Tried to bounce to the outside and can't. He's going to be wrestled down for no gain. Sending up a third and seven play. If nothing else, Wes, you're, you're back out of jail from where you were <laughs> bottled up down to our left. And, uh, and at least a flip field position at worst. Well, Bremhall just threw it up there and let Jesse go run. And, man, that really saved you. <laughs> he didn't want to punt from back in there. Back to throw is Bremhall being pursued from behind, and he's caught and sacked, brought down at his own 43-yard line.
That time it was Danny Reyes, the linebacker that pursued, got him, and on fourth down, Evangels got a punt. Ten-yard loss on the sack. And a punt from Josh Booker, a spiraling punt. It'll be caught at the 14-yard line by the Vikings. Returned across the 20, and then stood up and tackled at the 21-yard line are the Vikings, and Evandel will be back on defense for the Vikings getting possession at their own 21 with 5.22 left to play. Now time is becoming a factor. Exactly after 4-3 and out west, but you do want to be wary of the clock and certainly cannot give up any kind of score on this sequence as the Vikings take the field. Absolutely not. Not if you want a chance to tie and possibly win the game. And, and uh, right now, definitely going to need a big play from our defense. A lay handoff coming to the right side. Evangel has this bottled up, and it's going to be a lot of one-yard carry. Setting up a second and nine as Dukes again gets about a yard going to his right. Second and nine, Vikings at their own 22. Back to the line quickly out of their no huddle. Pistol formation for Reyes. Now looks back to his sideline. You have five minutes to go in this game. Reyes will lay handoff again to Duke's right side. Breaks through the line of scrimmage, gets to the 25, and finally wrestled down. A gain of about four, but he bursts through the hole quick. And with his strength and speed, he's... Kind of a, a guy you're afraid might break one at any moment. That time a four-yard game. It's just, third and five. They have a solid running game, and uh, it's really kind of beat us here in the fourth quarter. But so far, you know, overall our defense, the score does not show how our defense is played. They got a couple of good breaks that <laughs> led to some scores. Those that follow the conference will figure yes. it out. Yep. Trust me on that. Third down and five. Reyes out of the pistol, as the snap, lobs a pass, far sideline, and it is a caught on the far side for the first down, a terrific over-the-shoulder grab, made on the far side, over the defender by Jonathan Bird. Oh, and that's a big play, I mean, that's a big play right there, that extends your time of possession by at least a minute, a minute and a half, and that really puts the pressure on our Evangel offense if we were to get the ball back to make a score. 23 yard game. The Vikings now with their own 48. They convert a third and long play, a third and five play with a big pickup. Now to Shia midfield. Reyes, handoff up the middle. Dukes wrestled down by Swillum after a gain of four. Coming up on about three minutes here. And uh, time is, is now running short for Evangel. Swilla made a good tackle there. He, he was one-on-one -on -one with Dukes. If he doesn't get into the turf, this thing may be over. And that's the thing that we've seen from our defense. Is they made a yeah. lot of open field tackles. Uh, Steven Swillam, Randall, Lamar Allen, Cam Bruffett, Denzel. I mean, almost every facet of our defense, we, we've played well. Second down and six. Reyes again to Duke's right side. Slips the line of scrimmage, taken down to the 45, shy of the first down by about three yards. We're at 243 in counting in regulation time. And third and three coming up again for Missouri Valley. Vikings kind of getting what they want here. They're working the clock and hoping to get a third down conversion. I mean, they're taking their time moving the ball down the field. Third down and three. Crowd trying to rev up the defense again. Reyes out of the pistol. Again, the Dukes right side gets across. The breaks the tackle and goes down to the 41. Got just enough. He got met at around the line of scrimmage on the far side. Maybe a yard downfield, but slipped through that. And got another four yards, getting just enough for a first down carry. And all of a sudden, he has emerged as their top gainer on the afternoon. On the strength of his fourth uh, fourth quarter carries here, 
And less than two minutes to go now in this game. 28-21, Vikings lead Evangel by a score. Missouri Valley with the ball at the Evangel 41-yard line. Reyes again out of the pistol. Delay handoff right side to the big hole. It's across the 30, 25, the 15, and diving to the end zone and scoring of the Vikings that go up by two TDs. This time the carry to Xavier Stewart. He had a big hole or big opening to the right side of the line. Hit it and took off and scampers in for the TD. Well, that's... Uh going to be close to, to the game. It, it just puts it far out of reach. you got to have a quick score, and then you have to retrieve an onside kick, and a lot of things have to go right for that to happen. I'm not saying it can't, but it's going to be very hard. They had Stewart bottled up so well today, and then he finally breaks one, a 38-yard score, and the extra point by Miramontes is good. And with 1.32 to go, it's the Vikings 35, Evangel 21. Timeout on the field. We're back to JFK Stadium after this. This is a family that was almost fed by neighbors who almost volunteered to help them out. Almost volunteered. When it comes to giving, almost doesn't count. their largest lead of the day and it comes with a minute 32 remaining. And Evangel as you said Wes has got to score quick then they've got to get the ball back somehow and try to score another touchdown. You've got to convert both extra points in there too. And that just the tie and Evangel's got to do all that in 92 seconds of play. You do have all three timeouts to work with. And one thing about it, you've gone through this much today. You're not about to give up this yet. You haven't had this kind of a battle to go out quietly. As the kick from Miramonte, it's a yard deep in the end zone, returned out by the Crusaders, Otis Brown. Makes a move up field to the 25, breaks a the tackle there at the 30, at the 35, far side 40, and is dragged down. They had a hold of his jersey for almost 10 yards before Otis is finally hauled down at the 50. Well, certainly no give up in Otis Brown as he does everything he possibly can to change this game around. And this offense, this team is not going to give up. We haven't seen that from them once this year, so expect them to make a game of it or a try. 120 remaining. Brim Hall at quarterback will have Tommy Meyer in. Senior day in the final regular season home game for 14 Evangel senior and graduating players. Wanting to try to find a rally as Vikings coming all after Brim Hall and no chance. He's sacked at the 33, and Evangel quickly has to call a timeout. We're going to keep it here, as Evangel had no chance there. Brimhole had the snap. Two defenders came flying in at him, and he slides down to the 34-yard line for the big loss of yards. Third sack of the day by the Vikings defense, but they've racked up a lot of yards the other direction against the Crusaders. It's almost been 44 yards lost in those trio of sacks and Evangel now back at their own 34 yard line with 114 left to play. We mentioned that it's going to be a week filled with Evangel broadcast next week on Evangel on the Evangel Sports Network and ESPN 1400 back with you Monday night. Evangel men's basketball against College of the Ozarks at 645. 
back on Thursday at 7.15 from Ashcroft Center as Evangel men's basketball takes on Mid-Continent College out of Kentucky and then Missouri Baptist next Friday night from BBC. Football back one week from today. We're at Mid-American Nazarene in week 11 in the final regular season game of the year. That still could be for a national playoff berth on the line in that. And a false start for the Crusaders here. The snap never came as Evangel had the play in motion. Evangel's going to drop. It doesn't matter who you lose to. You always lose ground even with a loss, whether it's right or not. You lose by two touchdowns and an absolute battle against the third-ranked team in the country. If there's any justice, you don't lose ground in the national poll, but it never works that way. So you're going to go down a little, but if you can then knock off a mid-American Nazarene team that going into this week is ranked 12, you might make up that ground. And that for sure would knock off the Pioneers probably from a national playoff bid. So that could be like a playoff game next week in Olathe. Well, it certainly is, and I know our coaching staff and the team will handle it as such. But even this game, you look back at it, there were a lot of things that just did not go our way. And uh, some things are out of, out of, out of your control. As uh, Brimhall drops back the pass and scrambling to find some room on the near side. and He almost completes it to Bear. They say he caught it, but out of bounds. He was around, uh, actually around the line of scrimmage anyway, actually about five yards beyond it at his own 35. So you've got to figure out, uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, you're right. I mean, uh, you had bad bounces, a bad whistle, uh, a couple of penalties that were kind of questionable. But that, that last couple of minutes of the first half was just a lot of a lot of bad luck there. You still had to go about it and say, look, you had 30 minutes of football in a tie and even game. Rimhall back to throw in the pocket, being flushed out of it. Rolls to the far side, looks downfield, throws it down the far sideline, and it's intercepted. Under through his man, and running it down and taking it away was Phil Kraft, and that will likely seal it. Fifth turnover by Evangel today. And the Vikings now just need to close this game out with 58 seconds to go in it. Well, very proud of our guys on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, the 35 points is not the tale of how this game has gone. Um, and, and, you know, we'll talk about that in the post game, But... Very impressed with how aggressive and how physical our defense has become over the last few weeks, and I think it's culminated into this game. And there's a lot of things that our defense can learn from this matchup, especially going into a very good team. Some heads Minnesota. hanging down below us. I mean, you can see some sad faces there as the Vikings go into the victory formation because they had this opportunity and came so close, and now not going to get it today. I'll tell you what this. The, what this leads up to, Wes, and you hate to look past next week, but it bodes well for next year because the question mark is if the season would have continued like it like it had early on in the year when Evangel was winning like they were winning early in the year, the defense would be a question mark, but I think the last few weeks, and of course they're going to get a huge test next week against a high-powered Mid-American Nazarene team, you got to think that, hey, the, this defense has shown tremendous potential. Pioneers don't have to snap the ball again. Last 15 seconds are going to tick away. There goes the cooler over the head of head coach Paul Troth, and the Vikings are going to be conference champions. But I'll tell you what, Wes, this bodes well for, for 2013. If uh, the, We know that the offense will have a lot of weapons back, but the defense that played so well today, you can duplicate this effort and pick up where you left off. Uh, it bodes well for next season a lot. And you just feel for the seniors on this team, uh, you know, even thinking about next year, how we're going to be, but just the effort, the determination, and how these seniors have kind of turned the program around in their fourth year. Tommy Meyer, uh, Tommy Meyer, Jamail Randall, uh, along with a, a slew of other great seniors, have just really been an integral part in changing this program around and as Evangel sits 7-3 and three, a far cry from where we were last year 
It's a tough one to take, but this is a very good Missouri Valley team, and they proved why they're number three.